Well, hello everyone. I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to Thursday's edition of Take 5 and the message that we have titled Hidden or Forgotten. And we are talking about just how important it is to read and study the Word of God and get it in our heart and in our head. It is the most important thing that we can do as a believer in Jesus Christ is to read the Word of God, to study it, so that it changes us and equips us to be the, the believer, to be the witness, to be the evangelist, uh, as it were, that God intends for us to be, because that's exactly what we are as we get the word in us, as we hide it in our life, then it lets the world see Christ through us, and that's what it's really all about. We're taking our text from Psalm 119. We're just going to use verse 11 and verse 16. We actually read all of those, but we don't have the time to read all of those. This is what 11 and 16 says, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. That means I've hidden it. I've mixed it in there. I've integrated it in with my, my life. And I keep doing that until I become more like the word and less like the world. And when I do that, then I don't sin against God. And then verse 16 said, I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Now, that, that's very important. Yesterday, we, we've already talked about the forgetting part. We've done that. But I want to focus in on that delight part because we, we talked about it yesterday and we led ourselves up to a question that I left you with yesterday. When you look at that phrase, I will delight myself in your word, that, uh, that means that the word of God is supposed to be our highest form of gratification and joy and pleasure. If it is that, then we've got to ask ourselves the question. Remember, I asked you this yesterday as we were about to close. Why would you not want to read it? If the Word of God is our highest gratification, if it's our, our highest form of joy and pleasure, and when it is, we, we don't forget it when it's something that we really desire, why would we not want to read it if it's our highest form of gratification? Let me give you some facts about the, the Bible that you, you may not know. Some facts that in themselves should cause us to want to read the Word of God and should cause us to delight in it. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, All scriptures given by inspiration of God. Now that in itself is enough. The rest of the verse is powerful, but that in itself is enough. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. That literally means it is God breathed. So the Bible is the very heart, the very mind, the very breath, the very thoughts of God. It was spoken by God himself. The Bible is the most unique book that's ever been written because even though it was recorded by men, it was authored by God. Why in the world would we not want to read a book that was authored by God? The expression, the Lord said, or the Lord has spoken, occurs over 2,000 times in the Old Testament alone. No other faith-based book will ever suffice because when you read the Bible, you've been given access into the very mind and heart of God. The Bible contains 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New. The 39 in the Old Testament are written primarily in Hebrew with a little Aramaic. The 27 in the New Testament are, are written exclusively in Greek. The Bible is written by 40 authors ranging from kings to statesmen to doctors to farmers to prophets and priests and shepherds over a period of 1,600 years from three different continents. When you open the scriptures and you look at the Bible, it contains a library of different literature. It contains history and poetry, humor and prophecy and romance and letters and biographies, songs and journals, advice, laws, stories. It's a book of history, science, and facts concerning the past, the present, the future, and the eternal future. Why in the world would you not want to read it. Why would we not make a book this powerful our greatest gratification? 
God himself has chosen to preserve the Bible for generations and will continue to preserve it forever. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth will pass away. It will be changed. It will be renovated. But my word by no means will ever pass away. It will not change. Over the course of history, the Bible has been one of the most hated books. It's an authority and people reject authority. Men hate it and reject authority because they're ignorant of its truth. Because in the scriptures, you'll find the truths of sin and judgment and hell. And all of these are bitter to people that detest them. Though it's hated by so many, God has preserved it ever since that has ever been written. Men have tried to outlaw it. They've tried to burn it. They have persecuted and murdered those that promoted the Holy Scriptures. Two quick examples. One, uh, a man by the name of John Wycliffe. He he was a, a great Bible translator. He was a professor of divinity at Oxford. He's translated the first English Bible and was fired from that school and branded as an instrument of the devil. He died before anybody had a chance to kill him, and the church of his day had some very cross comments to say about him. They said this, quote, this pestilent wretch, the son of the old serpent, the forerunner of the Antichrist, who had completed his iniquity by inventing a new translation of the scriptures, end quote. 43 years after his death, church leaders dug up his corpse. They burned the remains and dumped it into the river. But to this day, Wycliffe translators crisscross the globe. William Tyndale was another one. He was hated for his desire to bring the scripture into a English translation, which would make it easier to understand. He was despised for that. He was killed publicly for that. But again, Tyndale translators exist. Tyndall publishers still surround this very globe that we live on. We should want to read the Bible if for no other reason because how hard Satan has tried to destroy it, but God has protected it every step of the way. Men tried to pervert it. They tried to take away from it. They tried to add to it, but God has saved it. And I ask the question again, when we have something that's this powerful and this near and dear to the heart of God, why would we not want to read it. The Bible has the power to change lives. It has the power to pick up drunkards out of the gutter. It has the power to make saints out of infidels. It has the power to restore broken marriages and the power to give hope to the murderer even on death row and to save from the uh, guttermost to the uttermost. It has the power to do that. Why, oh why, would we not want to read it? Why would we not make a book this powerful, our greatest delight and joy. Everything that you ever need to know is contained within the pages of this God-inspired book. It's a living testimony of who God is, and it should be our delight, our joy, and our greatest pleasure to open its sacred pages and take in the knowledge that God has provided for you and me. Well, hey, I've got to get out of here today. It's been so good being with you. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Friday's edition of Take 5. Till then, God bless you. Have a great day. Remember this, friend. Trust the Lord. He will never fail you.